Lady's a talk. Well, hold on. <laughs> she can proper talk. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm shuffle. Thanks. <coughs> when you ready, shuffle. Okay. Every day you do this program? No, uh, every week. Every week, once uh, a week. Yeah. Once a week. On Tuesday. And then uh, the uh, longer program I do, right. called Between the Lines. This is overall tradition. All right, all right. Yeah, country man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Yes, I'm ready. You give me that countdown or you just tell me go. <laughs> Imo Bakari, you're a Trinidadian. Certainly. You're a West Indian man. Certainly. This book, Conversations, mm -hmm. how would it connect to, to Guyana? Well, there are conversations that are relevant to Trinidad, that are relevant to Guyana, that are relevant to the Caribbean, that are relevant to the world. Mm. So there is a piece, or there are pieces in that book that certainly will resonate with the Guyanese public. Mm -hmm. All right? So first and foremost, thank you, Mr. Passat, for inviting me to this program. And a pleasant good day to the Guyanese public and those listening wherever in the world. We would like to invite you to a book signing of this book, Conversations, tomorrow at the National Library right here in Georgetown, in the conference room, from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. This book is priced so that you can buy it at $3,100 Ghanaian dollars, and you can call 692-8716 to confirm your attendance tomorrow or to indicate your interest in buying the book. You know, Remember, tomorrow, Wednesday, the 10th of August, National, National Library. Library Georgetown conference room from 5 to 7. Please call 692 8716. So having said that, that yeah, that's you know, one connection. <laughs> having said that, the fundamentals, you know, you need to be introduced to what this book is all about. This book is a book for all seasons, all ages, all ethnicities, all groups, in that there is something that would be relevant to their circumstance or circumstances. Um, we deal with values, we look at social issues, psychological, economic, political, regional, etc. And then some of the ideas in the book are universal. Mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. oftentimes people face challenges in life and they tend to become what? Overwhelmed, sometimes disappointed, sometimes vexed. Some people even get vexed at God. Some people, God is only good when things are going good. But as my students sang at a wedding on Sunday, the God of the mountaintop is also the God of the valley. So you need to be, have courage. So let me read a piece entitled Courage. Life is a mystery and filled with every activity. However, do not become too consumed with self-pity. You need to carry on and on, no matter how long it takes for your dreams to come true. With spiritual direction and inspiration, brain power and physical vigor, your life cannot stop until you reach the top. Hold your head up high and keep on flying on until you touch the sky. Interact with the stars. You may even consider visiting Mars. <laughs> but your thirst for success is a must. Mm -hmm. Non-stop. Hot or cold. Young or old. Race on, my friend. Race on, my friend. The prize is just around the bend. Mm. It, it, it sounds like if um, you're a motivational speaker. I'm a motivational speaker. I'm a psychology lecturer. I have a deep concern for humanity and improving their condition. Let's locate Emo in this whole thing. Tell us a bit more about yourself, Imo, apart from those huge outlines. Yeah, yeah, Emo Bakari has been involved in social activism for all his life. You know, I was involved in political activism for about 11 years. And the basic tenet of all of the various activities is to try to improve people's circumstances make them see themselves differently, make them act in a way where they can improve themselves and the society, you know? So be it sporting organizations, cultural organizations, the credit union movement, as I said, political, or political organization, 
the NJSC at the time between 1981 and 1992, um, social activism through a drug center, which I'm director, through working in communities, through encouraging young people, through encouraging all sorts of persons in terms of bettering their circumstances. So the messages contained in this will be a reflection of not only thought, but action over the years. Of all these platforms you've named, in the political platforms, sporting, um, cultural, uh, and other platforms, mm -hmm. which had been your most uh, effective platform? Well, right now I am a psychology instructor at the University of the Southern Caribbean. I deal with thousands of young people. I have dealt with thousands of young people over the last eight years. And it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, not just lecturing in the classroom. People come, people share stuff with me that some of them I, I didn't initiate, but because I guess they recognize of that concern, that interest, and I have an opportunity to help them not only in the classroom, but through one-on-one -on -one counseling. So I think, you know, that platform and also over the years doing community work in various communities, you have a force and appreciation of what people are experiencing and how you can play a part in assisting them. Mm -hmm. So those two areas, I think, have been high points over the years. And it is my hope, um, because I deal in books, uh, literature, it is my hope that conversations, mm -hmm. um, this book, um, this other platform that you're using will go a far away in helping you execute your, your mandate, your work. Um, Certainly, because I want to read something here. Uh, <coughs> right, something called Flexi Degree, right? What's yeah. it called? Flexi Degree. There are thousands of young people in the region, here in Guyana, mm -hmm. through the University of Ghana, through the University of the West Indies, through the University of the Southern Caribbean and other tertiary institutions who are coming out every year with thousands of degrees <laughs> in all sorts of disciplines. <laughs> what will they do? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some of them become frustrated because there's a misnomer that when you have a degree, you're entitled to big money, as we say in Trinidad. And some people say they're able with small money. But you have to prove yourself. Mm. Right? A degree in, in itself is not an indication that you right. will be a competent worker, that you will be a knowledgeable worker. That has to be proven. So this year is talking about patients in a different way, but it's also making some pointed statements. So Flexi Degree reads as follows. You're proud that you now have your degree and believe that you're entitled to a big, fat salary. I put big and fat together to make the point. Mm. Can you command such money? <coughs> what your contribution will be if employed? What value will you add to the organization's future? What will you contribute to its life story? Many have misread the script and feel that employers should jump on seeing their transcript. They are not prepared to prove their word, yet believe they are first class, are not patient, critical thinkers, and cross-talented. Yet they believe their employers must empty the vault in their pocket <laughs> like a fast-launching rocket. A degree is not a full measure of what you bring. Smart organizations are moving beyond the traditional interview, conducting psychometric testing to ensure that profits don't hit the floor with the poor choice of applicants. Candidates should not believe that a degree is sufficient. Your interpersonal skills count. Your presentation skills count. Your work ethic counts. Your attitude counts. Your drive counts. Your vision counts. Your achievements at work count. And your aptitude counts too. Patiently develop your skills so that you broaden your horizons and go soft on the salary demands in the interim. <laughs> Talk about Mr. Percent. The thing is, now I'm noticing that <coughs> with your application, you've been asked to produce a cover letter why you are a suitable candidate for this job. Certainly. And you know, it, it comes out from that poem there. Certainly. You need to yeah. know what um, how you can enrich the organization. En enrich the organization yeah. also. And most importantly, when you are given the opportunity, demonstrate to the organization that you are competent. You just can't say first class honors, degree in psychology or biology. You need to prove that you are worthy 
of the employment, and then they will consider you. But each young person come out with that idea. Right. That so that means that's a failure of the schooling system and the instructors in terms of how they're instructing. You can't only instruct based on a discipline. You have to instruct on the disciplines of life. If you want to create well-rounded people, mm -hmm. it can't be on mm -hmm. a discipline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These fundamental concepts and values is what will make the person a better worker, a better human being. So if you only covering the accounting uh, syllabus or the psychology, you, are, you have missed the bus. That's right. right? That's right. You have missed the bus. That's right. right? That's right. I know there <laughs> is a lot wrong with the education system. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Guyana and elsewhere. Of course. Yeah. The way we teach. Mm -hmm. we, de we definitely, most definitely. Yeah. And that's why I try to push literacy. Yeah, we need to be also well read. Yeah, you need to be well read and you need to have an empathetic vein running through your body because students come with all different kinds of situations and problems. And if you could empathize with them, that concern in itself would be an inspiration for them to do better. And mm. I have seen that when they feel that they're concerned, they will even work harder. Mm. And when you show interest in them, even though they're not doing well, they see you in a different light. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's on them does more than just talking about the contents of the subject matter. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. I mean, remember my school days, the literature teacher used to take us out into the open. Yeah, I remember those days. Right. Like, under a mango tree. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, look at the hedge and yeah. look, see the lizard chasing an insect or something yeah. and write about that. Yeah, because know, there's an interaction. Eh? I mean, if you're in a breezy environment and you're being taught something, there's a possibility it might be received better. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. in a hot, stuffy classroom. Indeed. You know? Indeed. So just that freedom, that's that different atmosphere. So, you know, teachers must be creative, innovative, and concerned. Yeah, yeah. emphasizing that and concerned, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 and yeah, do not yeah. view students as failures, even though they may be failing. Right. But if you show them that it's possible to achieve, certainly it could help. We, this textbook, you know, we can use this textbook. We don't need to stick to the text all the time. No, because I always talk about, you know, you have to teach the curriculum of life. Yeah. Right? And this book here, Conversations, is a book I'm hoping that um, the Ministry of Education in Guyana mm -hmm. will um, certainly review and... Um, considered to be made part of, you know, the school system, the literature, and it, it doesn't only speak to the subject area of literature, but it speaks to development uh, all rounded young person to deal with the various situations in life. Let's close with another poem that right. will um, buttress all that we've been saying about um, learning, education, um, growing up, looking in the world and looking at our attitude to the world and how we should right. perform. Right. So this one is entitled Schooling, which is tie in, right? So institutionalized schooling should not be the only yardstick to assess those who will be entrusted with the responsibility to lead and succeed. Indeed, some will say there is no other way to separate the esteem from the Z stream. Schools, pre-K, primary, secondary, tertiary, technical, and others, offering all types of courses, yet our world seems to be suffering from loss after loss. What are these institutions teaching? How are they preparing our children? Can their learning unravel the world's problems? When will we arrive at a place of grace, robustness, and greatness? Is the battle loss? Or are these institutions now albatrosses that must be dismantled? We need to create new responses to alleviate the myriad inconveniences that permeate the universe. Until then, schooling will continue to be failing. <laughs> right? So remind listeners and viewers that tomorrow the book signing will take place at the National Library Georgetown on Church Street in the conference room from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. The cost of the book is $3,100 Ghanaian dollars, and you can call 692-8716 to confirm your presence at the book signing tomorrow. And uh, Imo, I hope that there's other platform that you're using to get um, 
not necessarily a message. I don't like mm -hmm. to see book that's carrying messages. Yeah, yeah. Um, conversation, you know what I mean? Yeah. Dialogue, dialogue, yeah. debates, dialogue. I hope that you, the, the dialogue, the interaction with people, it will go a long way in helping a better Guyana, a better yeah, Caribbean and person. Just, just to end off by saying that after you have spoken about the situation, if you do not do anything about it, you will have wasted the conversation. <laughs> so we hope that the conversations are not wasted <laughs> and that you are inspired to make Guyana better, make the region better, make the world better. Yes, and Martin Carter, our poet, says, the middle where we meet is not the place to stop. Thank uh, you very much. Thank you. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks a million. <laughs> That's a lovely quote.